very curious to understand what kind of uh, uh, engines do we use as the solvers in your programs? Is it uh, like heuristic something, hill climbing algorithm, or what is it, or simplex, or whatever? What, what is what is the what is the core? What is the engine of your uh, solving? What, what are you using? I think he asked you. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it, it depends. Uh, depends on the project. Historically, we used to use simplex, but we switched to express. I don't know the exact reason why we switched, but I know internally we use express for the MIT solver. We use uh, Groby, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. We've, we've, we've done studies, and for the most part, they're roughly the same. Um, but I think Express, I think we chose for the, the solutions were consistently better, and then they also offer better support. So that's also a big aspect of it. Uh, honestly, I'm not familiar with these uh, th th things because this is not my major. However, I'm just interested to understand which are the base algorithms that are behind your uh, engines. Yeah. Um, if I just try to answer, basically mixed integer programming first. So mixed integer programming is nothing but the enhanced version of linear programming. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you, you might not, you might know one of those basically way to solve linear programming, right? It's basically just pure mathematical solving. But then some of the constraint actually telling you that some of these cannot be fraction because linear programming only give you fraction number. Right? But you cannot do fraction all the time. Some of them have to be exact number. For example, what is a fleet size? It cannot be 2.5, it has to be 3 or 2. This is how integer programming come into play that they do some kind of heuristic. I think they call branch and bound. I'm not an expert there, but they do branch and bound to try to see that what integer actually closer to a real solution while they're still maintaining optimality of the solution. Also, MIP actually have three major components. One is objectives, right? Basically, you want to minimize cost. So that is your objective. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is a, a constraint. Basically, what has to be integer? What actually have to be in a certain range? One to five, two to 10, you actually exact range. That's a constraint. Mm -hmm. The last one is decision variable. Mm -hmm. It means that what decision you have to give? You want the free style A3, A0 for five. You want A330 A3, for 10. Those become your decision at the end. And they have to be integer. Mm -hmm. So that's done. So you're going through iteration until you say, hey, I'm very close to optimality here, and can no longer improve anymore, I'm done. And it stops, it keeps some kind of heuristic improvement until it's within a certain limit, certain time, and then they give up. It becomes a solution of MIP. Okay. So reasonable? Yeah, sure. The combination and uh, the heuristic is also mm -hmm. uh, playing the yeah. role. Yeah, another thing that uh, I should explain a little neighborhood search. What? Neighborhood search. Yeah. Neighborhood search, when he said network optimization, that was also another key important heuristic approach that we use in a company. Yeah, construct some initial solution, and after that, try to improve iteratively until we close to optimality. Therefore, we are focused for this market, uh, but uh, basically uh, we don't have any limit for cooperation. If there is interest there, so we can discuss and to see that whether we can find some mutual interest there. Mm -hmm. yes. So, uh, I mean, if, for instance, our metropolitan would you know apply uh, or, or offer some. I mean, would need some optimization. You know, would you go for that? No, we, we are currently <laughs> discussing with our ministry also, but I think uh, basically it's uh, we need to evaluate right. how efficient it will be because if scale is really very small, maybe the solution will be will not be required. You know, maybe by hand it will be much easier just to implement such kind of really complex solution, or maybe some really simpler things can be. Uh, providing. We are discussing, we'll see whether it will be feasible to implement something for Armenia because 
uh, also it's also in our class that we are currently discussing. So if it will be feasible, it will be interesting for Armenia, definitely I think also our company is ready to support because we are here, we have some presence here and I think all, also our management would like to support the Armenian government in this initiative. I mean, we're always looking for interesting business cases to solve, um, but solving these problems is not cheap. And again, we're not free. Um, and it's a good thing we aren't, because then we wouldn't be able to pay for the hackathon and the their program. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you once again. So just on behalf of uh, us here in the College of uh, Zabin and Sonia Akian, College of Science and Engineering, uh, thanks again for coming, taking time out of your uh, travels, and, and for those of you who do live here, uh, out of your work day to come here and share this with uh, our community here. So we're growing as a science and engineering uh, community here. We, as many know, we have an industrial engineering master's program, a computer science bachelor's and master's, and pending accreditation, we'll be opening a new undergraduate degree in engineering sciences this fall. So kind of an electro and mechanical, maybe we'll help build some of these devices that you guys can then optimize. Uh, so so uh, spread the word, because it's just a pretty recent uh, decision on our part to go in that direction with the undergraduate degree, or in general, if, if a bachelor's or master's degree in these fields are interesting to you or your uh, colleagues, uh, brothers, sisters, you know, folks, please uh, spread the word. And many of our students do work at the same time, so if we find a, a good uh, accommodation for, let's say, part-time studies, full-time work or something like that, we do have, we're pretty flexible. So thanks again, guys, and uh, thank you. Look forward to collaboration, and then the hackathon should be, I think, a lot of interest to our students and maybe alumni and folks who are uh, in the in the in the field. So thanks again.